Do you guys consider CrossFit bad or even dangerous? Let's talk about that. What's good, YouTube? Welcome to the inaugural episode of uh, TMI Fitness with Coach Kareem Podcast. And uh, our special guest, introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's P, uh, P Tear, P Peter, P Peter Griffin. That's what I go by, Peter Griffin. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks, Peter. Uh, so, yeah, this is the very first episode of the podcast. And uh, I've got a few questions just to introduce what TMI Entertainment and what it is and how TMI Fitness fits into that. And just a few questions from emails. And um, we'll just talk about this week's topic, CrossFit. One that I've always found kind of interesting. I've had my takes on it, my opinions on it before and after trying it. And we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. It's a it's a passionate one, to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, let's get these questions. So, Peter, what's the, what's the first question you got for us? All right. Yeah, uh, uh, this one uh, comes from Cody S from Saskatchewan. Uh, he asks, uh, what is TMI Entertainment? What What is it? Thanks, thanks. TMI Entertainment, um, it pretty much represents me. Like, <clears throat> I, I uh, to remain humble and stuff, like, I, I guess I've had some successes in life, but ultimately, to remain humble, all I wanted to do was, uh, say, come up with a moniker, and for me, it's been, I'm just a young man trying to make it, just to keep things simple. So, it represents me, it just, it just represents people out there just trying to make it, you know? keeping it simple in today's society there's a lot of division and divisiveness and i just kind of made it as a place to just drop positive comments and, and po motivational quotes stuff that gets me going every day and also a place to just share credible you know academic based fitness information you know just to, just pretty much a thought-provoking fitness oriented community and environment and it's all it's brand new pretty much just started it but you know uh we're all out just here, just out here, just trying to make it. So that's kind of that's kind of what it is. TMI Entertainment, and then underneath that, you got you know TMI Fitness, which is what this podcast is. TMI Dating for just like advice and things like that. And um, I've never been a man that knew a whole bunch of stuff, but I know a little about a lot. And uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of the premise is to just help people with the little bit I know in a, a very broad spectrum of things. But hopefully, it helps somebody. Maybe you'll get a laugh or two here and there too. So. That's TMI Entertainment. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, about your background? That, that question comes from Mr. Sam Gonzalez of Boston, Mass. Uh, what is, uh, what's, what's your background? Why don't you tell us? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, my background um, in fitness. Uh, well, pretty much, I have a bachelor's in exercise physiology. They focus in strength training and conditioning. I'm USAW certified, so USA Olympic weightlifting certified. Uh, we're studying, preparing for the CSCS, which is the uh, uh, certified strength training conditioning coach um, examination. What else? Oh, I'm currently in school now for my master's in performance enhancement and injury prevention because I just ultimately, man, I just I really, really love uh, the, the, the human architecture of fitness and how you can kind of turn this little kid who might be like a high schooler who was maybe I got, might have got bullied or picked on or they were just small, but they always wanted to play sports or figure out what to do just to be active. And it's, it's a good way to, it's almost like if you build somebody like that into an Olympian to see the change in their personality and just how they develop it, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So that's, that's my motivation to even how I got, I got into it really. And yeah, that's my academic background in it. And I'd say overall, I've been coaching cumulatively on and off for, since 2012 yeah in and out because it's, it's, it's definitely my secondary career uh primary is just something else that i picked up my time in the army but it uh it's for sure my passion so undoubtedly my passion is fitness so that's a little bit about that all right the following question here we have from uh, mr carl call counts of nevada uh he he wonders, why why did you get into fitness in the first place? 
Yeah, it kind of leads back to what I said before. I just wanted to, like, ultimately, it, it pretty much started, for, I'd say it started from, because I was never the biggest, strongest guy. I was always, uh, I had an older brother, and he was definitely the athlete. So, honestly, if you, like, as quiet as it's kept, if we want to boil it down to simplest form, he motivated me. My brother was the athlete of the family. He's the bigger guy, bigger, stronger, always faster, and he played sports. But, like, I never really played sports. I was more like the bookworm and stuff, but I man, I found them really cool. And as I got older, uh, I got into them more and more. And, you know, I would just play around with weights in the basement and, and just lift and things like that. But ultimately I wanted to like learn the why behind things instead of just what to do. You know, anybody can really do curls, but if you can understand like how hypertrophy works or how to actually program like the different energy systems and and how different rep ranges affect your muscle tissue because of the different energy systems, like stuff like that, like the inner workings, like the the nerdy stuff, you know, that's the stuff I really find cool. And that's what can make somebody who's, who's smaller with a whole bunch of heart into a success story, you know, because talent, this was a quote I heard from uh, Will Smith, actually, he says, talent you have naturally skill is only attained by hours and hours of beating on your craft. So that's ultimately what kind of got me into it. Those, that thing for sure. My brother motivated me and I just wanted to learn about it and grow stronger and actually like help myself as well as help other people. But I would say the, the key thing that got me into it for sure, man, mixed martial arts in the early two thousands, USC was a rave. It's still pretty big. Now I still watch it. I'm a big fan. And what irked me so much about it is when people, oh my God, people would pull out of fights easily like a day or two before the fight and we're talking like premiere fights that everyone wanted to see that everyone was ready to see and they'd pull out now i get it it's a combat sport people get hurt injuries happen completely understand don't even get it twisted but what i attributed it to was the fact that it happened so often and at the time this is talking like mid to early 2000s or so not even that but maybe like oh seven or like 2012 so it was still pretty like a budding sport and it's still pretty new. And, and the training methods weren't, there's no universal way to train everybody. And there definitely wasn't then because you have to train for your strengths, your weaknesses, your opponent's strengths, their weaknesses. I just had an issue with everyone getting hurt so qu- qu- so close to uh, a fight date. And I immediately attributed to training. That was my like mission is basically to just get into the fight game and help fighters, man, because I do think. I don't have like a perfect method, but I, I do think that I wanted to create a method that would at least help fighters learn to like properly deload and prepare to peak by fight day instead of maybe training too hard or cutting weight inappropriately to because, you know, there's, there's studies out there that show that like with dehydration and, and the ways that some people go about cutting weight, it's it's definitely unhealthy. It's definitely not the right way to do it. But Sometimes you have fighters and wrestlers that come in. That's their only choice. Like, hey, I got to cut 10 pounds by such and such and such date. It's the only way to do it. Not necessarily. I mean, there's diet restriction, too, and, and just things you can do with calories. And that way you actually don't really lose your overall, what's the term, capabilities, if you will. So, yeah, with dehydration methods, that's like the primary way to see us. Like, I don't remember the exact percentage, but there's a significant drop off that you can get. When it comes to your performance, at least like two to four percent. But guys, I don't I don't remember offhand. I'd have to pull up the research for sure. But um, yeah, so that that's what got me into it. I just wanted to help fighters, especially like the smaller guys that nobody ever saw coming that might have had one strength. And they just wanted to add tools to the toolbox to just one, definitely not get hurt because hence the injury prevention side of things and in that degree that I'm working on. And um, just how to enhance their performance. So that's kind of what led me to that path and direction when it came to, to grad school, for sure. So that's what I'm currently working on now. So yeah, those are the two things that got me into fitness. Two things. Next question, what you got? All right, yeah. The next question we have here, who are the favorite people you've coached? Solid question. Favorite people I've coached. I can think of three offhand three situations about four people but so let's start with the first one. First one i for, for sure had to say my parents my dad was more of like the swimmer type so he had like prior 
experience in athletics. So I never really got to work with him much. I would just kind of give him advice. But he was really, can you do his own thing? You know, I, I would do like P90X with my parents sometimes. But my dad did, did his own thing. But I would help every now and then. My mom, she for sure, uh, when I got out of school, I got to, I was still home for a little bit. So I got to work out with her all the time. And she's a very petite lady, little lady. But man, I taught her how to power clean in the summer. That was one of the proudest moments of my life. Not even gonna lie. It was, a, <laughs> it was so fun to see my little mom learn how to power clean an Olympic lift. And all I needed was just somebody to just kind of experiment and, and teach the material to. Because that's what I like to do. Like, I love to teach. Uh, if you're willing to learn, I will teach you the proper way so you don't get hurt. Because that's what I'm all about. I'm not, I'm not like a technique freak, but I definitely don't want people to get hurt. Because I want to learn how to do it properly. And then at the end of the day, then you can worry about loading up the bar. It's about proper uh, technique and, and neuromuscular ad- adaptivity. So that way you can progress to a point where you don't get hurt. Because the joints, as well as like your ligaments, there's not a lot of blood flow to them. So they tend to develop much slower than your actual like muscle tissue, like the belly of the muscle itself. And uh, when people go into the gym and just, or even after a a while away from the gym, they tend to think they can do what they did, hurt themselves, then then you're just no good to anybody. So it's definitely about a progression. So I learned in school the proper progression of like a linear periodization program for, if you don't know, um, uh, for the way I learned it, it's pretty much just um, it's like a multi-phased program in which like the first third of it is uh, more like neuromuscular based. So you're just rewiring your neuromuscular system of your body. So the rep ranges tend to be a little bit higher and you're basically just focusing on connective tissue as well as neuromuscular uh, adaptation to those higher reps. So I think I just talked in a circle, but essentially your rep ranges would be higher. Um, and you do this to, to just readapt and get the body rewired. Second phase would uh, be like your strength phase, essentially, and that your rep ranges would drop down, but your load would increase technically. So you, this is when you start seeing rep ranges that it varies by you know, what you read. But I would I would probably program someone between eight to about four rep range ish, eight to four, six ish around that range reps per set. And then you got your actual like preseason explosion type phase when you're doing what you're like your max rep ranges so we're talking about like your threes and unders like your test sets and things like that that affect more of like the, the atp pc system and glycolytic system well glycolytics more strength but atp p system to just be more explosive and you're also trying to get like towards sports specific training too this is one massive segue to get back to the point of I taught my mom <laughs> how to power clean <laughs> and it was awesome. That was awesome because she, she had never done it before. And it was really cool to just, because uh, I, was, I was home for a minute. So I got to teach her how I, I did it the right way. I just, you know, uh, taught her high reps first, built her through a nice little strength phase. And then eventually we progressed into power clean. And she picked up on it pretty quick. She got very strong that summer. So super proud of her. So those are my two. That's, that's one. That's one moment. Second one for sure would be there was okay so there's there was one person i trained pretty recently like a client of mine she's like about five two like no more than maybe 130 red hair and she was not a prior athlete at all she actually didn't really get into to working out until about college and she did it to you know just to to help out with just um like mentally and then she wanted to learn how to run and stuff too she got into running first but she never really lifted she ended up meeting me and I taught her over the last like nine months basically the proper system and, and just because she had a, a, a personal trainer before but then she met me and I just uh, taught her my methods pretty much because she was just doing I believe like strength based kind of lifting which was working but after a while it just kind of got repetitive so we just reworked the program and put her on a proper progression and the reason why I liked her so much still do because I talked to her but um her her uh, attention to detail and she always stuck with the programs and she was super consistent like every morning this wo- this woman was either running or lifting or like foam rolling i had to have to remind her a couple times but she was always about being consistent and that was pretty awesome so uh, she got the results and she eats super clean like nutrition i'll admit i am not the strongest when it comes to nutrition uh, i'm not like a 
a dummy by any means, but I, I, it's not my strong suit. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. <laughs> um, I, I can uh, I can program like nobody's business, but I mean, even I struggle with nutrition. I don't eat bad, but I just don't get it as, as much as as, uh, as like programming per se. But she had nutrition down packed for the most part for her body, which is different. That's another thing It's different for everybody. And she was very consistent and you know, she got the results she wanted. And uh, to, just to see her change physically over time, it would affect her mentally. And she just got stronger mentally and physically. And it was really cool to watch. This little never used to work out athlete become, a, I mean, lack of better words, became like a little alpha female badass in like nine months. So proud of her. Super cool. So that was like number two. And that was pretty recent. So, yeah, for it to stand out like that, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Third one, I had to say, okay. It was my time in the army. It was a buddy of mine. I'm not going to say his name, but um, he was Ukrainian. So this guy, he never worked out ever in his life. Like at all. Ever. When I say ever, I mean like ever. He, he was like more of the, uh, like the, like the nerdy gamer type, you know. Shout out to the gamers out there. I'm a gamer too. <laughs> so he was Ukrainian by blood. And... Uh, this guy had never worked out, so he, you know, we, um, he, he had to train for the PT test, which I don't know if you guys know. Um, at the time I was in, it comprised of a, like a two mile run, two minutes of push ups, and then two minutes of sit ups. It's changed now; they add all kinds of extraness to it. And so, but at the time it was just those three events, and he just wanted to get like overall stronger. Just wanted to just get athletic and learn how to lift. So, I had him in the gym on our off time, and I just took him through the progression of a linear periodization program. You know like four weeks of just like higher reps and the strength and the power, all that. So I didn't want to, what's the word, stereotype him. But I just assumed that he would be really good at lifting heavy sooner than he thought he would because he wasn't a small guy. He, he was. He had to be maybe 6'1", 185-ish. Like he wasn't a small dude. He just didn't work out before in his life so he was just a thicker guy but not muscular by any means you get what i'm saying so got him in the gym got to lifting with him and while i was working out with him there was a guy i was also helping who from texas now this dude corn fed old school younger too i believe by a couple years he was a football player so he knew how to lift and he was uh, i believe 18 let's say the ukrainian kid let, let's say he was like 20 i don't remember honestly the uh, the ages but let's just say that was the case. So we got the Texas guy who I was training at pretty much the same time, but he had experience. So I could I was putting him through stuff like your power cleans and your Olympic lifts a lot quicker because of prior experience. And he just kind of picked up on it and he was going. So his deadlift got up pretty heavy, pretty quick. He, he had to be maybe 5'9", five, 5'10", nah, five, five, maybe, maybe 185, 190. He was like thicker built because he used to play linebacker. And you got the Ukrainian guy who's kind of nerdy. Tell me why in about five weeks, maybe, maybe three, the Ukrainian kid was outlifting <laughs> the cornfed Texan, like significantly, because we had a deadlift test uh, that I put him through. I prepped him for it. Then we had a nice little taper off and a deload. And then we had a test day just to get their numbers on paper and see where they were at. This Ukrainian kid was so dumb strong, bro. It was insane. It was amazing. Because I, I just, I don't want to stereotype him to like think that, man, you don't understand. Your Eastern European genes, you're going to be really strong, bro. Like, you, I don't think you get it. But he picked up on it so quick. And he just got amazingly, amazingly strong within such a short period of time. And that's not even like the part that really gets me going. Because I still brag about this other part. So some of the most technical lifts you could ever learn are the Olympic lifts, you know, like that's undeniable. You got your, your snatch, um, your, your jerk, split jerk and power clean. And this kid, like we just did bar work for the, to start out just to, so, he could, so he could learn the technique. And he picked it up. It took me easily two years to learn all three to like really good technique. He picked it up. To solid, like pristine, I'm not even going to complain, that looks really good technique. Maybe three days? Maybe? Maybe four? 
it was insane. And that happened before we did the test. So that's what I knew. I was like, man, you just don't know how strong you are or how like genetically gifted you are. And some people just have that. But when, the second he said Ukrainian, I'm like, dude, you don't even know. You literally don't even know what you're capable of. <laughs> and even when he achieved those goals, I, I, cause I lost my mind at the gym. I was like, do you know how technical those lifts are? You just, you picked them up so quick. And he was like, I mean, I guess I, is this good? I'm like, yes, it's really good, man. I'm super proud of you. Like, good job. You don't even understand. Like you, you just picked up some of the most technical lifts ever really quick. And that's awesome. And he just didn't get it. And I, to this day, I still brag about it. It's like probably my number one, like most awesome thing to just, that I just found cool from a fitness standpoint. So those are the, the three, the three favorite people I've coached or situations that I've been in that I coached. It was, it was really awesome. So what we got next here? All right. So uh, next thing we got here is uh, the main Pierre to resistance is CrossFit bad. Would you say it is? Uh, well, okay. So let me go ahead and get into it. Um, that's what we're all here for. The main event is CrossFit bad. I'd have to say on a whole, no. And this is just my opinion as someone like with my background and also in performance enhancement and injury prevention. There's one point in time I had never tried CrossFit, so I didn't want to be biased, but my main issue was with, with them was like their methodologies. But I'm going to start on the positives first. Let's talk about what I actually do like about CrossFit. OK, I like the fact that there's scaling involved, which means if you guys aren't familiar, like it basically... I don't know how it was earlier in the early 2000s when it first started, but the scaling involved, uh, it, it actually allows you to get in there and do the same lifts that other people are doing, but you just scale it towards what you can actually do. You, like, you're like you not forced to go in there and, and do a million overhead squats or a, a million, what do they call them, the thrusters, a whole bunch of those, or murder a friend time or all this crossfitty stuff. You just have to scale it to what you can do and then go from there. So I do like that about it. I'm not sure if that was always the case, but it is now and it is at certain gyms and that's cool. I also think that in regards to certain CrossFits, it, it all comes down to the coaches. I don't know how things were earlier, but the CrossFit that I went to and the coaches that I spoke to, they, they actually have academic backing and a lot of them were like, legitimately certified in certain things like like CSCS or even USAW uh, one even had like a they had a, an Olympic weightlifting clinic I believe every Saturday that specified just in the Olympic lifts so that's pretty cool too but that's not every CrossFit it just depends so what that coach explained to me was that the the, the coaches actually determined the box itself like the CrossFit box or, or the, the location can be made or broken based on the coaches so that was eye-opening too but yeah I, I do like that there at least are coaches but when they're knowledgeable that's what i really enjoy because it stops people from getting hurt um, the fact that it's a community you know because the gym setting could be very isolated and some people go to just you know zone out and be by themselves while you have other people who want to go for the sense of community and camaraderie and they might be like prior athletes or prior military and they just want to build relationships or maybe even you know meet somebody romantically and it's just a good place to to just uh it's like a watering hole of swoleness i guess like you just go to lift and <laughs> be athletic together and, and and compete too that's another big thing is the competition like some people really like that i, I usually compete against myself but like some people really like the idea to compete against other people and that's that's dope you know so those are the positives for sure uh, but CrossFit on a whole, like, um, I, I can't consider it bad. When I was initially looking at the injury rates, there's like research that came out. Uh, one came out in May 2018, actually, that specified, uh, you know, are injuries more common with CrossFit training than other forms of exercise? And it was basically a survey study. There's never actually been just a true, like, double blind research study that at least I could look up, um, just going through the information here that I've seen. But this one, pretty much said that overall when you compare incidents of injury with crossfit compared to other forms of training by just other forms they meant like just generalized olympic weightlifting distance running track rugby 
gymnastics, like the things that comprise CrossFit, the, the injury rates were comparable, which means just like, which means CrossFit wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It just didn't make a difference. It, nobody got hurt more is the point than just doing those other forms of training. So those are the main takeaways. Uh, so CrossFit really isn't bad, but it does have to be scaled, I think. And uh, that's a positive to it. Now, what I don't like about CrossFit, this has changed over time, but initially my issue with CrossFit was A, the randomness of it, but I might have the caveat, once I actually went into a CrossFit and spoke to a coach about why they'd randomize things, it made more sense. CrossFit isn't something that's meant to make you necessarily better at one thing or even necessarily train you for like a sport specifically. It's not meant to be a specificity based program that's not how it works and they, they'll just they'll own that too like they know that's the case they'd rather you be pretty good at a bunch of stuff than like super duper good at one thing and that's in some cases they're like motto but from a strength and conditioning standpoint when it first started back in believe in the early 2000s the mindset back then like as strength coaches was uh i mean so you mean there's no actual like programming like it's literally just randomized like how can it be a one size fits all kind of thing because the mindset from a strength and conditioning standpoint is like you, you actually train properly in order in, in a, like a sequential systematic way you know like progressive overload things like that so it seemed so foreign and everybody was just going in there snatching and blowing out rotator cuffs and just just doing all this silly stuff and it just didn't make sense which to be fair that might have been the case back then when it first started but it depends on the, the what I learned is it depends on the box, which and that depends on the coaches in the box and then their certifications, too. So that actually changed uh, the randomness. I get why they do it. So I can't say I don't like it. I just understand why they do it now. So I think the main thing that I had with CrossFit was they did power based movements for time. That was the one thing I just could not comprehend. I didn't get it. Everything I've ever learned from a strength and conditioning standpoint to prevent injury about power based movements, like we're talking about your Olympic lifts now. So like your split jerks, your snatches, your power cleans, your hand cleans, things like that, box clean, whatever, any kind of clean, your Olympic lifts, like your fast, explosive, violent, like your movements that you do at the beginning of the workout when your uh, your energy levels are at the highest, your max glycogen levels at the highest, your hormone levels, are, everything's at its peak. You do it at the beginning. And you're ready to go to explode and violently like move that weight as fast as you can because it's meant to increase power, make you more explosive. OK, now you can do what you want. Uh, you know, anybody can go in the gym and just do curls for 50 minutes. It, like that's your prerogative. At the end of the day, you can do what you want. I get it. But when I think about it from an injury prevention standpoint, the main issue I had with CrossFit was that. I'm not sure how to do it now, but definitely early on, they would have situations like you're doing snatches for time and then you go for a run, come back, be taxed now. So now now we're, we're, we're definitely out of the ATPP system, the glycolytic system. Now we're the straight up oxidative and we're about to do more snatches when your form is jacked up. Like, OK, we could scale it, make the weight lighter. I get it. I do, but no, that, for me, everything about that methodology wise has just rubbed me the wrong way. It just didn't make sense. I literally couldn't comprehend it. It, it just, it, it went against everything I was ever taught from a strength and conditioning standpoint and how you're actually supposed to order like the output energy wise to get the most out of the athlete through the workout. Like you start with your explosive lifts at the top move on to you like your bigger compound lifts like your like your squats and your deadlifts and your bench presses then you get more to, to isolatory lifts and auxiliary work and injury preventative work towards the bottom after you know obviously after you warm up at the beginning too and then you cool down at the end that's just what made sense to me that's what i learned but back then crossfit wasn't like that it wasn't like that at the time and, and that's what the issue was that i had with it so as for now, is CrossFit dangerous? I can't say that it is. And I'm, I'm only speaking off of the research that I found and me actually trying it. Like, I did it myself. I didn't get hurt. And the specific box I went to, 
the coaches were very informative. And the first time I went in there, it was honestly just to watch, ask about their on-ramp process, which I'm not sure if you guys guys know about. It's basically like you could just go in for, I believe, what, two weeks, 10 days, something like that, or a month. And you just learn the movements. Like a coach, you work with a coach to just do bar work, learn all the movements and the things they do in CrossFit, like the thrusters and their box jumps and all that stuff to their techniques, rowing, all that. And then you uh, move on into actual CrossFit classes. So it's, it's just like a, a nice progressive transition instead of just jumping in there and then, you know, blowing out your labrum or something. So that was eye opening. And to talk to some of the coaches in there who had, like I said, like actually accredited and had backgrounds and accredited, they had uh, certifications. Uh, it just opened my eyes to what CrossFit really was. So to conclude, I can't really say that it's bad. I can't really say that it's bad. It depends on what you want. If you're someone basically trying to go and get in shape, you'll definitely get in shape You for sure. Like undoubtedly, you're, you're working out. You're going to get in shape no matter what. From an injury prevention standpoint, can I support it? I would think so also, but you just, you definitely want to make sure that you go to a CrossFit box with coaches that know what they're doing and know what they're talking about, because that's just my opinion from an injury prevention standpoint. Like you don't got to take it. It's my only, it's my first episode, you know, (laughs) you don't got to take what I have to say, but in my opinion, I just feel like you should go in, make sure you do your research and actually talk to the coaches and get their background. And if, you know, if they do have uh, certifications that like, uh, you know, add academic backing to to the why they're programming a certain way, then I think it's it's a it's a fair shot to give it a chance. You know, can't really uh, don't push yourself too hard. Definitely listen to scaling and and, and the scaling procedures and uh, maybe make a friend, too, because that way they can help support you and push you. But also don't kill yourself like uh definitely learn to progress properly just because you have to meet something for time doesn't necessarily mean you have to rep out a certain way I, I, the way i did crossfit they said do i think we had to do like snatches and then go on a run and then come back and do more snatches man my snatches i didn't get as many as many people i'll be the honest i didn't but my technique was sound and i didn't have to worry about hurting my shoulder so it's just what you make of it it's just what you make of it, and uh, that's my overall opinion on it. It's not bad. It's definitely good for people that just want to get in shape, but I would say if you want to be something sport-specific, it can help you cross-train, but if you want to get specific to a certain sport, I wouldn't recommend it in that case because they say flat out that they're not sport-specific. That's not their MO. Their MO is to make you de- like pretty good at a bunch of stuff. So if you can accept that, then by all means, you know? Go for it. So that concludes the premiere episode of TMI Fitness Podcast, episode one. Is CrossFit bad? And uh, let me know what you guys think. You know, what are your thoughts on CrossFit? Have you ever tried it? For sure, like send me your email questions to TMI Entertainment 365 at gmail.com. It's listed right there on the page. Just go ahead and drop a like, drop a comment below with your questions, and I'll for sure answer them in the next video. We're going to try to do this at least weekly to bi weekly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But what do I know? Just out here trying to make it. Thanks, guys.